Ooh, my first time doing an intro for Mudster. Hopefully I don't mux us this up. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the generic goblin gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup with a twist. It features the Game Breaker gang, which is kind of like a two for one, only with just one game. Max is playing his Eryxmethes deck, keeping Azor's Gateway, Aether Snatch, Rite of Replication, Benser Shaper Savant, two islands, and an Eternal Witness. Nick is rocking Garolf, keeping Tectonic Edge, Gilded Lotus, Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Two Islands, Clever Impersonator, and Deep Analysis. Chris, who's been on the channel before, is playing as Lazav, keeping Nemesis of Reason, Sunken Hollow, Mind Funeral, Notion Thief, Swamp, Halimar Depths, and Glimpse the Unthinkable. This is an older game because Martin's still playing his Sekuar deck, keeping a Wooded Foothills, Temple of Malice, Extractor Demon, Overseer of the Damned, Shadowborn Apostle, Dragon Skull Summit, and Smoldering Marsh. Max wins the die roll and starts us off. Max plays a tap Tranquil Thicket, passing. Nick plays an Island. Chris plays a Halimar Depths and rearranges his top three. Martin plays his tap Smoldering Marsh, passing. Max plays an Island and casts Azor's Gateway. Nick plays an Island. Chris plays a Swamp and casts Talisman of Dominance. Martin plays a Dragon Skull Summit and casts two back-to-back -back Shadowborn Apostles. Max plays a Colony Garden, making a Broccoli token as it enters. Nick plays a Tectonic Edge and pays three mana for Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Chris plays a Choked Estuary and reveals a Sunken Hollow from his hand so it comes in untapped. He loses one life as he makes two blue and two black to cast Lazav, tapping his talisman, and passes. Martin draws and plays a Temple of Malice. He scries one and then plays out another Apostle. At the end of turn, Max activates his gateway, drawing a card and then exiling one, putting Venser underneath it. Max plays another island for turn and brings in his commander, Arithmeses, in his main phase and passes. Nick plays an Inventor's Fair and uses the Vizier to untap a land. He taps enough for a Gilded Lotus, and then taps the Lotus to cast a Mind Stone. Chris plays one of the various tapped black and blue lands, and he then pays two mana for a Glimpse the Unthinkable and targets Martin. He mills Martin for his top 10, and decides to have Lazab become a copy of the Essence Warden that was milled, and he passes turn. Martin plays a Forest for turn, and swings three Apostles at Chris. They connect for three, and Martin passes. Max draws and pays one for Preordain. He scries two and draws one. Max then plays a Coiling Oracle, with Chris gaining one as it enters, and Max then reveals everyone's favorite, a Trigon Predator. He then casts his copy of Mindstone and passes. Nick taps his rocks to cast Deep Analysis, drawing two. He then untaps the Gilded Lotus with the Vizier, and taps a good chunk of mana more for a Fleet Swallower, which Chris isn't upset about, and he gains one life as it enters. Chris untaps for turn, and draws. He casts Memory Plunder, and targets Martin's Demonic Tutor that he'd milled earlier, and he goes to find a card for his hand. Chris then plays the Sunken Hollow he'd revealed earlier, and passes turn. Martin plays a Wooded Foothills, losing one life to go and find a land, but shortcuts first playing out Sekuar. This gains Chris one life as he enters, and Max also chooses to activate his gateway, drawing a card, and then has to exile one. The Trigon Predator goes under the gateway, and Martin then passes to Max. Max draws for turn, and plays an island. He activates the gateway again, putting a forest under it as its ability resolves. Max then pays 5 mana for Future Sight, and reveals Garuk, Collar of Beasts off the top. Nick flashes back Deep Analysis in his main phase, losing two and drawing two cards. He taps more men to cast a Clever Impersonator, 
who comes in as a copy of Lazav, who is a copy of the Essence Warden. This gives Chris one life. I should mention it still has Lazav's copy ability because of how weird Lazav is. Nick then plays a Loxa on Warhammer, putting it onto his Fleet Swallower. He swings it at Max, who mills his top half of his library, and he shows the table all he milled, one of which was Kozlik, Butcher of Truths. Both Nick and Chris have their Lazavs become a copy of Kozlik, and Max then shuffles his graveyard into his library. Max then takes the 8, and Nick gains 8, and Nick plays an island in his second main phase, passing. Chris untaps and draws. He plays a swamp for turn and goes to combat. He swings Kozlazav at Martin, who has to deal with Annihilator 4 before moving to blocks. He sacrifices a land and his apostles, which triggers Sekuar making him 3-3-1 Graveborns. Martin then moves to blocks, putting everything in front of Kozlazav, which is enough to take out the commander. This has Chris putting him back to the command zone, and in his second main phase, he casts a Nemesis of Reason and then a Jace's Phantasm. Martin draws and has to pass. Max plays a command tower for turn and activates the gateway again. He exiles Aether Snatch to it and then drops Gruk Primal Hunter. This removes the final counter on his commander, which I guess I probably should have been mentioning, but oh well. Max's commander is now a creature and he down ticks the Primal Hunter to draw 12 cards. He has to reveal them because of Future Sight and we see him lay them out. Kozilek is once more on top and Max then plays a Soul Ring. He then passes to Nick, discarding down a 7. Nick gains 1 from his Infender's Fair, and then sacrifices it in his main phase to find an artifact. He reveals Lightning Greaves and puts it to hand. Nick then heads to combat, swinging his copy of Kozilazav at Chris and the Fleet Swallower at Max again. Max mills half of his library, while Chris decides what to sacrifice to the Annihilator trigger. Nick is then able to have Kozilazav become a copy of the Hydra Omnivore before moving to damage, and as it connects, it has each of Nick's opponents taking 8. Max does block some of the damage coming from the Fleet Swallower, preventing 2 of it while Nick gains some life once it connects. Nick then casts a Solemn in his second main phase, and passes. Chris recasts his commander in his main phase, and passes. Martin draws, and passes. Max draws and plays an island off the top of his library as his land for turn. Max then activates the gateway, exiling Kira's follower, and then has the artifact gain Max 5 life and transform into Sanctum of the Sun. Max taps the Sanctum, making a good chunk of mana, and he casts a Thran Dynamo and then Brawn off the top of his library thanks to Future Sight. He slaps a Vow of the Wilderness onto his commander, giving it plus 3 plus 3 in Trample, and Max then plays out Garuk. And with the walker on the stack, Nick uses a Tectonic Edge to destroy the Sanctum that Max was presumably about to untap. Max then casts a Kicked Rite of Replication to make 5 copies of the Fleet Swallower, and untaps some lands with Garuk Wildspeaker. Moving to combat, he swings his commander at Nick. Nick uses the Vizier to untap the Swallower and puts it and the Solemn in front of Max's commander. Unfortunately, he still takes some commander damage because of the Trample, taking 7, but also gains 8 life from the Fleet Swallower and draws a card as the Solemn dies. Chris also has his copy of Lazav become a copy of the Fleet Swallower as Nick's copy hits the bin. In his second main phase, Max then plays Eternal Witness and returns to hand right a replication, and he then passes. Nick plays an island and casts his Lightning Greaves. He taps enough to cast a Steel Hellkite and gives the Greaves to it once it resolves. Nick then heads to combat, swinging the Lazavavor at Martin, dealing 8 which in turn deals 8 to the other opponents as it connects, and he passes turn. Chris draws and casts a Whispering Madness. The table then discards their hand and draws 6 because it's the largest hand size. He then ciphers it onto his commander and goes to combat. He swings it at Martin, and before letting the Swallower trigger resolve, Max flashes out Stunt Double, having it become a copy of Nick's Lazav that's actually a copy of the Hydra Omnivore. Nick also has a response and casts Brainstorm. Martin then mills half of his library and reveals a few demons, but nothing Chris is interested in. 
The Lazav Swallower then connects for six, and the Cypher Trigger goes off, casting Whispering Madness again. They then discard their hands and draw that many, while Max has to reveal his draws. Martin draws for turn and plays Bajuka Bog, exiling Chris's graveyard. He then casts Kadamas Reach to find a land for the field and for hand, and play the land, and shortcuts first, playing out Shadowborn Apostle. Max draws and reveals Kozilek once more, who just wants his 15 minutes of fame on camera. Max then downticks Garuk in his main phase, overrunning his board and giving it all plus 3 plus 3 and trample. Max then swings a Rickmethes and the copy Lazav at Nick, while the five Swallowers go all out at Chris. Sadly, the Swallowers don't fully mill Chris out because of how they work, leaving only one card in his library, but the fact that five nine nines connect certainly takes him out of the game. Max and Nick decide to have their copies of Lazav, who still has the copy ability, become a copy of Chris's Consuming Aberration, which is one of the cards that Chris had milled. Nick then responds before moving to blocks, using his Vizier to untap his Consuming Aberration Lazav to blocks Max's Lazav that is also a copy of the Aberration. Max's copy is bigger though because of Garuk's pump, and Nick still takes 3 damage from it, and he blocks Rixmethes with Steel Hellkite, preventing 5 and going to a frightening 20 commander damage. With damage being dealt and Chris getting taken out, the Lazav copies of Aberration get taken out because their power and toughness severely drop and the leftover damage on them is enough to cause them to die. Max then casts Wonder in a second main phase and passes turn. Nick untaps and draws. He casts Garolf in his main phase and he puts the Greaves onto his commander. He then activates his commander with Max responding to it by sacrificing his Mind Stone to draw a card. He then reveals Explore off the top and they resolve the Garolf trigger. Nick exiles two creatures to make a zombie token that's a 16-16, and then plays out Thassa. He untaps the Gilded Lotus with Vizier, and activates Thassa to make the zombie unblockable, and moves the Greaves over onto it. He moves to combat, and swings it at Max. Before moving to blocks, Max casts Aether Spout, which deals with the zombie token. In his second main phase, Nick plays a Sente's Divining Top, and passes. Martin plays a Swamp for turn, and casts another Shadowborn Apostle, and a Master of Cruelties. He is then able to flashback Dread Return, sacrificing three creatures, to bring back Rakdos the Showstopper. It resolves, and we move to some coin flips. He hits a remarkable amount of creatures despite whiffing on the first few flips, and then passes to Max. Max draws for turn, and reveals off the top, playing an Island as his land for turn. He then pays 10 mana for Kozilek, who I feel like we've seen a lot of in this game, and he draws four cards from casting the Eldrazi. Moving to combat, the four Swallowers go at Nick, who mills half his deck, then half of that, and then half of that, and then half of whatever is left. At this point, he's left with three cards, and then takes 24. Max then plays at Wall of Roots, and passes, discarding down to seven. Nick draws a third of his library, and embalms his Vizier of Many Faces, which comes in as a copy of Kozilek. Nick then gives it the Warhammer, and makes it unblockable with Thassa, before slapping the Lightning Greaves onto it. Nick then swings the Clone Eldrazi at Max, Max knows he's done for as soon as the Eldrazi connects, and Nick gains 15 life as Max gets taken out. He then passes to Martin. Martin draws and looks through his graveyard. He plays a land for turn, and casts his Endicar Resurgent, and then casts a Shadow Mord Apostle, drawing as he casts it. Nick draws half of his library this time, and plays an island, and has Garolf become unblockable before moving the Greaves over. He has Kozlik become unblockable with Thassa, and he swings it at Martin to finish off the game. Game review time! So this one was a bit interesting, especially considering how many things were copied by different Lazavs. It was also pretty incredible to see someone swing with 5 Fleet Swallowers and still not mill someone out. Although, only losing half your library each time probably will result in you ending up with 1 or 2 cards in the end. Considering that Nick only had 3 cards left by the time that he was able to start winning, I was really surprised and I thought he was done for by that point. Unfortunately, Martin's deck didn't get to do very much this game, but at least we've seen it go off in other ones. I will say for Chris, I'm not sure I would have attacked Martin when I had a Kozilek Lazav. He didn't seem like the main threat at that point, and I think he would have been better suited going after Max or Nick. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. 
You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.